Hey everybody, I'm the Dungeon Coach, and we're gonna build an entire city in five minutes or less, in just five steps, and those five steps acronyms spell steps. <laughs> How awesome is that, right? Uh, the first thing is the size of the city that we're gonna get into here. Then the theme of the city, which is actually, in my opinion, the most important part. Then there are the essentials, is which you basically take the theme and run with it. Then you have S-T-E, I had to spell steps real quick. P is the people of the city to actually fill it up with. And then the last part are the shops, of course, because Players are actually gonna go places, individual places inside the city. And that's the part that I really got the most stressed out about when my players would go to a new town out of nowhere where they took a detour or something and I wasn't really ready. You have an entire general system here, this five step system. You can build a generic city that you can put anywhere or a specific city that you can completely flush out. So if you like quick and easy systems to upgrade your games with, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. What we're gonna do here is I'm gonna give the general overview of this thing, show a little research source that I have to give you guys to be able to help this process yourself in any of the future games or any of the future cities you want to make and then I'm going to put my money where my mouth is and actually do this and create a city in less than five minutes I'm going to be on a shot clock and everything so here we go the first of these five steps in steps <laughs> I just love that so much is the size it's the quickest of the, all of the steps and you just think about how big is this thing you want it to be there's a bunch of different categories of a chart that i'll put up here for just in general is it a city is it a town is it a kingdom how big is this city because that is going to affect some things going forward as far as how many how many taverns is this place going to have is it going to have a blacksmith at all is it going to have three blacksmiths you as the dungeon master are going to make the call on this based on how big or complex you want it to be and where you're putting this in your World. This place your party's going for a pit stop. Do you want it to have three blacksmiths and be really complicated and you have to come up with multiple taverns and multiple all this stuff? Or do you want to keep it simple? Step number two is the theme. And this is the most important step of all of the steps. I'm biased towards this one. But it's so important to actually bring this city to life, bring the town to life. What's the theme of it? And what I mean by that is I break it up into one of two categories. It's the trade, which I guess is another T, right? or the district that's involved. I have two tables that I'll put up on here for you guys. This is literally straight from the resource that I'm going to be talking to you guys about here in a second. But these are amazing as far as you can roll on them. You can shop through them and glance over them. I'm going to roll on them for the sake of the, at the end of the video, just to kind of keep everything random and going. But these are the different themes that you can put a twist on your city. Fishing, that's a trade, but if you took a city and made it the theme of fishing, the entire city kind of changes. Where the docks are, maybe the whole city is actually floating on some sort of wharf. The entire trade district is on buoys suspended over water. Or what if the theme is blacksmithing and everything is metal? Or in a completely different direction from fishing, what if it was art? And that is the theme of your city. Over the There's murals and, and graffiti type of art all over the entire city. Even if you go to the blacksmith the armor itself is beautiful and colorful with all this different paint and artistic style or maybe you can look towards the district's table for some source of inspiration here and you think of jails and that's the main thing of the city the entire city has multiple jails for different types of criminals, different types of offenses. It's an extremely structured city. Or maybe it's a zoo. The theme of the city is a zoo. I've actually done this and, and I you literally use this table. And I was glancing through, I was like, what if this city has an amazing zoo and the entire city was revolved around this like menagerie of all these different creatures and fantasy creatures that have been pulled from all over the world and lots of people came to see it. Which then brings us into step three, the essentials, because this is now where you take the theme and spread it throughout your entire city and you make it essentially <laughs> the core of the identity of that city. So whatever thing that you chose, whether it be art, fishing, prisons, whatever you chose, now go back through those same tables that I showed you a second ago, show them back up here again, Zach, go through those tables again with this new chosen theme in mind and basically scan through your city and just think about to brainstorm what that would look like with a theme of fishing. What would a cemetery look like in a fishing town? I literally just had this idea. What if the caskets are all floating in this underground cemetery that's really creepy, but they store them underwater and they all float there and you can go visit underwater the graves. Or some of the other things I chose from before, the art, I already kind of talked about the blacksmith having artistic armor with high, very good engravings and stuff. The tailor would have very colorful clothing. Everything would be colorful. Your party, it might even be a problem because maybe 
maybe your party just wants simple black leather to be able to go on some sort of stealth mission and they're in this town and it's just full of color and they're like oh man what what or if your theme is a zoo and you go to buy a horse they don't actually have horse all of the horses are zebra so those are the essentials of the actual city but then this is very important to note because i think this is overlooked sometimes in, in city building is the defenses the, the essentials of the defenses of the city how does the city defend itself if you're i'll, I'll stick to the themes that i've randomly been coming up with here if you have a defenses of a zoo how would a city with a zoo theme defend itself Think about it yourself for a second. I know the first thing that popped into my head were exotic mounts that the guards of the city use to defend the city. How crazy would that be to be attacked by some sort of like uh, the fantasy creatures? Anything, could be dragons, could be whatever it is that's in this zoo that turn into mounts to protect the city. Or maybe they're not even mounts. Maybe they're actually just creatures that they release to go fight off anything that attacks the city. Which then makes me think of the fishing city that maybe they have trained a task force of dolphins or sharks or something to be able to defend the city and the whole city surrounded by this moat which also matches up with the fishing vibe now you don't have to run with this theme so much but i do i love it it really brings the city to life i hope you can even stop and think about this yourself i'm excited to do this thing in this five minute little challenge to show you how quickly this is but even just now in the video i don't know how long it's been so far but we've just brainstormed i did not pre-make this this is all coming off the top of my head because i want to show you how freeing it can be to see a city just start to come to life that zoo city sounds really fun the fishing city really cool but what i'm saying is you don't have to go off the deep end <laughs> That wasn't planned either. But you don't have to be crazy extreme. You can have some parts of your city be normal. You can have it have a normal town's guard so it's not too over the top and you just wanna give it a little pinch of flavor. Now for step number four is the people. I already have full videos that I have done on this and comment down below if you do want me to do a super quick video kinda of like this video on how I do this and, and go on it a little bit more. I will have the video link down in the description on the video that I have so far for it. But how I do NPCs like this is I have two different tables, personality traits, and quirks are the two things that I think about for NPCs and I roll on them and that's all you need for an NPC. So this is a big, the big, maybe the biggest takeaway of this whole video. When I make NPCs and when I make shops, the last two steps here of this five step system, I make them generally. I do not plug them into certain parts of the city. I have a list of 10 NPCs. I have a list of 10 shops that could be anything. I think that's the biggest thing to take away here and the biggest secret tip of this whole thing is not to be too specific because once I've made a blacksmith and they have a specific thing, if they don't go to that blacksmith, I, that, that's technically wasted time. Maybe they do come back later. I could always move the blacksmith somewhere else, but why not have a list of 10 NPCs and list of 10 different shops that you generate through the methods I'm gonna to talk to you guys about. And then when the players choose to go to the blacksmith or the tavern or the entomologist, which is something my party did to me. Thank you, party. Uh, it's which is bugs, by the way. Entomologist is like a, is like a bug bug zookeeper person. Uh, people they want to know about bugs, and I was like, uh, what? But thankfully, I use the system that I use, and I was like, yeah, sure. And I just had an NPC that's now the bug guy, and then I had a flavor for the shop that's now the shop, and I was ready to go. They had no idea. So sticking back to step four, got a little excited there. You have the quirks of the NPC and the personality. The personality is just a general one word usually, uh, emotion, there's a sad, angry, uh, clever, sarcastic, cautious, you know, whatever that phrase is, just to help me role play it a little bit, give them the disposition to the world. And then the quirk, something weird about them, something a little off, something I could also run with and have some fun with. Because those dungeon masters need to have fun too with these NPCs instead of just being basic guards that they just try to fight and you talk with a little deeper and that this is all they do. Like, what? that's not, that's not fun to do. So, those are the only two words I need from those two different tables. I have 10 of those and I'm done. Yes, I will say if you do want to have a specific NPC that's very important, maybe they are heading towards a town to meet a certain person, the head of the Hunter's Guild. Okay, well then you should flush out that Hunter's Guild and put a theme on that Hunter's Guild. Maybe the Hunter's Guild of the zoo is in charge of the zoo. Maybe the Hunter's Guild of the fishing themed city is actually a bunch of fishermen and they're the ones that are, they, they only hunt in the waters and stuff. And you can put little tweaks and flavor on all these things. But if the players are going specifically for a place or a person, then you do need to flesh that out a little bit more than you normally would and just have two words. You might wanna have some quests that they go on or some rewards or some other things that you would spend more time on like you would normally. Now we're at step five and then we're gonna 
going to get into the five minute challenge to show you guys how quickly you really can do this thing. We've already kind of made two different, like about three or four different cities just in talking about all this stuff, but I'm going to do it for real with a timer, shot clock and all that kind of stuff. But step five are the shops of the city. Again, I generically place them as I think about the theme and the essentials of everything as they trickle on through this whole system. I have generically shop ideas. The best way to show this is with an example. So if I have my city, it's the last step for a reason. If I want to generically make my shops, I need to have keywords and little flavor bits that could be applied anywhere. So just for example, if I had the fishing city, I would have little keywords like it's drowning. Like that, that would be one of the shops. I have a usually a D10 list that I have in number one would be it's drowning. So if they want to go wherever, if they go to the blacksmith, if they go to entomologist, if they go to the leather worker, if they go to the if they go to the tavern that they want to sleep at, I might roll on it or I might pick it and it's drowning. So this fishing city, the place they go into, it's like leaking and it's like there's some sketchy parts that are starting to go underwater. And that's all. I have two words on this chart that say it's drowning and it gives so much flavor to what this shop is called. Some other examples off the top of my head would be owner currently fishing. So like they, they, they come into the shop of some kind and the owner's like gone or they're off to the side or maybe they're at the deck and they turn and they're literally actively fishing off of the side of, cause it's maybe open air. The whole shop is open air and that's just all me running with it right now. Maybe in the center of the shop, there's a huge hole and that's where all the stuff is. And you gotta actually swim down and go down to it or like a glass bottom boat fishing. Maybe the whole floor has a glass bottom and you go shopping down there, you tell them and they send some sort of scuba diver type person or maybe an aqua person with like gills and stuff and they swim down for you, get your item of choice and they swim back up. But none of those things I just listed off are tied to a specific shop. You could put that anywhere. The blacksmith, maybe the blacksmith is underwater and they forge all of the armor underwater. Or maybe they forge it up above top and maybe it's so heavy that's the one that's sinking. I'm telling you guys, if you make your cities like this and you keep them general, you're gonna be able to do whatever you want. With these tables, if you have your NPC table and your shop table, you can make and do anything, whatever crazy curveballs your PCs throw you because I can't tell you how many countless shops and NPCs and entire cities I've fleshed out and uh, no one ever saw them. So then you have to take them and remove them around, but then it doesn't feel, it doesn't fit the city is right, doesn't fit the moment is right. Ah. But again, for shops, there are times where I'm like, ooh, this is gonna be a very important part. It ties into a quest, it ties into some sort of overarching story plot, whatever. I do put those in specifically, and then those are prepared shops versus improvised shops. Time out. Before we start the shot clock here, I wanna show you guys, this is a resource that is available right now on my website. It's a five-step city builder. It is on my website. I really do. Uh, I've been working on this for a long time. This is actually the version two of this whole thing. I really, really polished it off to make it even more efficient, even more useful. Like I'm talking about right now, it has all full tables, the tables you've seen in this video and more tables to be able to guide you through this whole process every single time and spark even more bits of creativity and creation. This whole thing is you only five bucks. There's so many fives here, five minutes, five, five steps, all that kind of stuff. But right now on the website, it is on sale uh, for the next month. I wanna say thank you to the people that jump on these videos early and really love them up and help this channel grow and help me be able to make more of these things and give you guys even more resources to help your games, spice up your games and make your life easier. So check it out in the link down in the description. And while you're down there, I have a Patreon also that I give monthly PDFs of even more resources, magic items, bonus perks, homebrew rules, and all that kind of stuff. You want to keep spicing games up even more. So let's get into that challenge. All right, here we go. I'm excited to do this thing. Uh, I'm going to have an actual shot clock on this thing. I already talked to my editor about it. It's going to be a five minute shot clock so it's popping up somewhere and it's going to be real and live and tied up to it. I, th th we're still going to cut out the parts where I'm sitting here thinking that would be boring for you to watch me think. And I want to truly see 100% legit how quickly I can do this thing. And the last thing to say is I actually am going to use this. I thought I was just going to make a generic city just the, for anywhere, but I have a, a campaign I'm running over on my second channel, The Dungeon Coach Plays. It's in the description as always. But I'm going to have this city be for my town. They're about to go in this big, huge war, and there's going to be a city that they go to afterwards. I'll have it be there and just have a city that's in the middle of the grasslands area. And that will be kind of the, where my headspace is at where I'm putting the city. So here we go, start the clock. First step is the size. We're gonna set the size of the city. This is small, they, I, want, I want them to, okay, village. We're gonna, no, we're gonna go to a town. We're gonna be a town, so it's a little bit larger. They have a little bit more stuff to do. Boom, that's step one. Step two, I'm gonna roll a d20. Three, 
three is Skinner Taxidermy, okay? Taxidermy and stuff is gonna make sense in this case because it's in the war zone. So this place is gonna be a, and we're gonna dial it down back to a village now. You can go back and forth on these steps. So it's gonna be a village that lives off of the scavenged corpses of dead animals or creatures or horses or maybe even people, that's kind of creepy, of, of these war-torn nations of all this kind of stuff. So they're gonna be scavengers, skinners, and taxidermy people of all of that. That's the theme of this city. It's already getting kind of dark. That's interesting. Interesting. And then I'm going to go to the step three is the essentials. Step two is quick, right? You got to pick your theme. And now the essentials, we're going to scan through what that would look like for all these things. So farmers, not going to have a lot of farmers. Miners, no. Brewery, winery, uh, so no. Hunters, yes. There's going to be people that go out and, and that's a whole thing that they do. They're going to go out and scavenge the land for living creatures. Maybe the hunters are just for dead ones, almost like vultures. They have pet vultures. They have pet vultures that are on their shoulder that they can, like a condor on the on the sleeve of everything and that, that's how they defend the city as well i love that vulture theme the vulture and the hunters i just looked at the table that said hunters and i'm like ooh, it paired up very nicely with vultures i'm gonna really run with this whole vulture theme i love it alchemists are gonna have some sort of uh smell anti-smelling technology as far as the technology as far as the potions go they're going to have anti-scent type potions that they do for the taxidermy and the, all the dead bodies in this city uh the stables are going to be not dead horses but <laughs> that's, that's they would have horses to be able to go out and do these things uh, the leather worker is going to be obvious. The, the leather worker is going to be huge in this city because there's going to be so much, there's going to be an abundance of leather. Uh, the blacksmith, I don't even think we're going to put a blacksmith in this city. They're going to figure some stuff out with blacksmith. Instead of metal, they use like teeth and bones and stuff. Love it. Also, that's a great point. Is blacksmith, I am basically removing blacksmith and replacing it with a toothsmith or a bone smith. And whatever a player could find in blacksmith would be a bone type material that would match the AC or the whatever type of stuff they're looking for. Super cool. But do they want to wear bone armor that's, that, that's weird looking? Anyway, um, rest of the trade. I'm scanning through the districts now and a lot of them aren't, aren't popping up to me. Sewer, sanitation, music, arts, gambling, food. I feel like the city already has a lot of flavor to it. Religion maybe there's some sort of like dead dead animal sacrifices or they bring some of these bodies towards some sort of entity that wants their oh that's that's possible and now the defenses of the city are going to be that vulture army these condor sized vultures maybe there's a rock there's a giant vulture rock that protects the entire city as it's like they can, whoo, they can call on it with a whistle and it comes down and swoops. Ah, that's going to be the defenses of the city. Boom. Step four are the people. I would already have this roll up some people. I'll make up one right now. I'm rolling on the personality table, then the quirks table. Let's see what things we get. The two traits I got for this NBC are negotiator, which is like the, the, that's their emotional type of thing. I know it's not an emotion, but that's like their key, key word to define themselves in one word, negotiator and they get <laughs> angry very easily and snap like short short fuse type person so this npc is going to randomly pop up wherever i need to place them and they would be very quick they try and negotiate with them and try and try and barter and stuff get angry when they don't want to do it and then call off the whole deal and i just be a big drama queen about the whole thing that'd be very interesting to see how the players react to someone an over-the-top angry negotiator super cool randomly made from this npc then the tables and stuff for the taxidermy thing what type of general shops would there be one shop would require a dead body of an animal to be able to sacrifice Sacri maybe it's a, maybe it is a sacrifice i was gonna say offer up as payment and the shop entirely functions their entire trade on the carcasses of animals and that's they don't even accept gold that's interesting that's one creepy pelts i would just have a, there's a bunch of pelts of animals of all different kinds and maybe some of them are creepy or maybe the different things that they have and the shop owner is creepy and maybe they wear the different pelts but i would just have creepy pelts that would be the only word i would need on this table to be able to take and run with it the third one's going to be illegal pelts i just thought of what if there's some sort of animal that's illegal to kill in this world? The players would have no idea about this probably beforehand, unless you wanted to foreshadow it or drop the lore beforehand and have this be a bigger part of the story. Or maybe they learn it for the first time if they walk into this shop and you just happen to roll this person or this this shop quirk or whatever you want to call these things. And it's an illegal, maybe some sort of the pelt of some ancient creature or something. And these, these people, this group, harvest these people and it's, it's sketchy and illegal. Maybe there's special magic properties that these items have that are made 
from this pelt? Maybe is it worth it for the players to take it or not? Do they take it, buy it, and get arrested? Or do they not even know that this is an exotic, illegal type of pelt? Another one that just popped in at the end here is reptilian pelts. That's the only two words I would have for that. And there's some sort of dragon-themed, lizard-themed pelts, and all of the reptilian anything come here. Maybe they're falsely saying that it's dragon, and it's just reptile skin, and they're upselling it and saying that it's dragon scale. Or maybe it really is dragon scale, and it's like super legit, and it's the only place around where they people come and they find pelts and they sell their pelts to this person and they're the only person that knows how to cut and craft dragon armor i literally wouldn't make that decision yet i would have it say reptilian pelts in dragon question mark i might put that on there too for all these thoughts that i've had and i would leave it as that and in the moment whenever i choose to have that be there I would choose what type of flavor that is. Or maybe beforehand, if they have some sort of dragon things going on, maybe I choose to have that be a thing and then I do have it be real dragons or not. There it is, shot clock, what are we at? I don't know, I don't know. I feel like that's a good uh, a taste and start of this city that I am gonna put into the campaign uh, in, that I play for my, my players and stuff. So players, if you see that, uh, you know where it came from. And there is some lore about dragons in my campaign that they have not unlocked and unleashed yet. So my I might put some of that in that dragon shop and see what happens. So I hope these five steps are simple and show you that in less than five minutes, you actually can flush out and make a city that's alive and that's cool and unique and you're excited to run, which has NPCs and shops that you're excited to explore. And I love having the generality of it that you can plug anywhere because those tables can be used in any city. Maybe not the shops one, because I do try and make that one more specific, but the NPC one can be used anywhere. And then as the players, I, you, you see, I'm getting excited about this. As the players are exploring these cities, you're going to kind of be exploring it with them. If you have these random tables and you just have, all right, cool. It's this NPC in this spot. So this angry negotiator is going to be inside of a drowning... <laughs> whatever and all the different combinations and pairs have led to some really cool moments that i'm excited to like jump in and be like oh this is a cool oh it connects in oh and if you keep things a little bit more broad because when i first started dungeon mastering i was a little too narrow-minded a little i flush out things too much but if you stay just a little bit broad, there's so much room. It leaves room for the players to add in cool stuff, for you to add in cool stuff and make tweaks and changes. So I hope this opening up has helped you to think outside the box. Peace.